Hey, it's Pat here with another talking point. I thought today I'd talk a little bit about the subject of 6-inch G.I. Joe. And the reason for that is that it seemed in the past that that would come up every couple of years or every few months, but now it seems like it's one of the topics that comes up all the time for various reasons. Um, I'm sure not the least of which is the very successful Star Wars Black 6-inch series and Marvel Legends that are both going strong and really have gone leaps and bounds of improving in quality over the last couple of years. And G.I. Joe fans may want to actually see some of their classic characters in that scale. Um, maybe not everybody does, but uh, I thought that it would be interesting to talk about something that I, I do know about regarding 6-inch G.I. Joe in the past in the G.I. Joe brand because oftentimes when are these subjects to come up people post well shouldn't Hasbro know isn't it obvious that this would be something that would be successful why haven't they thought of this well they did as a matter of fact if you go back and look at some of the forums you may see that there were a couple of 6-inch G.I. Joe figures that were canceled sometime around the 2002 line. I guess maybe I shouldn't say canceled because these things are such a mystery that it's not really clear whether or not it was a toy line that was in full development or if this was just kind of a proof of concept. There's not anything that I've found that is an actual test shot or any steel tooling that was cut or anything that makes me think that it went beyond anything that could be handcrafted at Hasbro. Uh, the samples that I've seen have all been cold cast, you know, sculpted pieces, anything that could be done actually in-house. So it may not have been anything more than a, an item that was meant for discussion and something that they would consider for cost analysis and that sort of thing to see whether or not they should move forward. Um, the two that I've seen, one of them is Cobra Commander, and uh, I've seen actually a couple of Cobra Commanders, and then there's another figure. Well, let's cover Cobra, cover Cobra Commander first. Um, here's the one I have. It's currently in a bag. I will assemble it to hopefully get some close-ups, but I don't want to drop it because this thing is probably pretty fragile at this point. I mean, this thing's 17 years old at least. And that's just kind of an estimate of 2002. It's not 100% clear, I don't think, of, of exactly when these came from though that was the era that I was told whenever I got them. They have, let's see, they have articulation not at the ankles, but they do have articulation at the knees, single point of articulation there. It's not a ball joint at the hip, but then they have waist. Everything is basically like a, a very standard joint. There's no ball joints in these whatsoever. Then they have the waist, the shoulders, the elbows, and the wrists, and the neck and that is the extent of the articulation on these. I don't bring these up because I feel a question of, hey, if they were to release these as they are now, would you buy them? I think that the topic of this is more interesting because it does mean that Hasbro has considered these as far back as then. Um, back then, I, I think that the Marvel Legends line had just gotten started in 2002, whenever G.I. Joe was also kind of getting itself back out into the mainstream on the shelves. But Marvel Legends, we, we also need to keep in mind, had kind of spun off from the Spider-Man line that had started in 2000. That kind of was really changing the game because they had great sculpts, the articulation was amazing. And so I could definitely see Hasbro deciding that if they're going to bring G.I. Joe back out, maybe they should consider the possibility of doing it at a different scale or at a couple of different scales. So these definitely seem to me like they were, they were part of that discussion. Um, that's Cover Commander. Uh, the interesting thing that some people have brought up is, well, you know, we see what size this is, and sure it's six inches, but was it for a six inch toy line or was it going to be pantographed down? Are these two ups? You know, is this a two-up of a Cobra Commander that was unreleased for a more familiar scale? Well, the answer to that is no, um, because this bag that I received this figure in is blank, but I also have an accessory for him, and it is labeled G.I. Joe 6-inch Cobra Commander. Uh, this accessory should be familiar to you. It actually is very similar to the one that came with Cobra Commander 
in two, I believe it was in 2002. It didn't come with the original 2002 Cobra Commander. It came with the one that came later on that had the O-ring. Whenever they changed him over to O-ring Cobra Commander. Originally it had a sound attack tab. And then whenever he was re-released, they removed the sound attack tab. This isn't exactly either one of those. Because the, the, the base of the staff is a little bit thicker. As a personal side note, I'm a huge fan of a tactics. Probably sometime in early to mid-2005, it was a game that used uh, little figures that were on a base that moved around a board and they shot at each other. Uh, a lot of people thought that they looked silly as action figures. I wasn't taken with them right away, but then I really enjoyed them and loved them. Anyway, I'm kind of digressing, but the point is there were some prototypes of those that popped up or images, um, I'll, I'll try to get the link in here actually of the article that, that shows those original Attactics. Attactics did not start at Hasbro as a Star Wars product. They actually were being developed as their very own game and some of those earliest prototypes, there's one of them that actually uses this same staff head as a missile. I believe that it's a Pharaoh figure. Uh, a lot of those were based on various uh, creatures and monsters. Anyway, the Cobra Commander staff seemed like it was a sculpt that was enjoyed and maybe bounced around a couple of times and visited in a couple of different concepts. So I can't quite say for sure where it originated. I believe a tactics did come later because like I said, it was on the shelf and that was I, th I think 2005. I'm pretty sure that there were like patents and things like that that popped up online. The paperwork for that was said 2005. So I can't imagine that they were working on it earlier than they were working on G.I. Joe. Uh, so this is most definitely the earliest that this was created. And it does say 6-inch Cobra Commander. So this is a Cobra Commander staff for a 6-inch Cobra Commander, which leaves me to believe that this figure was not going to be pantographed down or changed to any other scale. This is a 6-inch G.I. Joe toy line that was being created in 2002. Moving on, we have this other figure here, which this represents the G.I. Joe side. I've never seen any other characters other than these two. If there are any more out there, I would love to know. Please post in the comments. Uh, I kind of highly doubt that the topic of potential 6-inch G.I. Joe didn't come up again at any time between then and, and now at Hasbro. I'm sure that it's something that has probably been revisited, thought of several times, I don't know how far any of that would have made it to concept. That's kind of another topic for another day. I'm just presenting these to kind of show that it's been thought of way long ago. Um, this one's interesting, though, because um, he doesn't say Duke on the package. Or I shouldn't say package. It's the package I, I received him in. It's just a Ziploc bag. It's, it's that fancy of a package. Uh, but it doesn't say Duke on there. It actually says Short Fuse. And that's a little bit strange to me, because if you look at the, the fully assembled figure, which I'll try to get some pictures in here, if you look at the fully assembled picture, it actually looks more like the art from the, the packaging and some of the marketing for the 2002 G.I. Joe vs. Cobra toy line Duke than the 2002 Duke figure that we got. But there are some similarities between the two, so I could see why... If that art was based on this figure, which is what I'm guessing, uh, I could kind of see why they still would have used it. It still was some very effective art, and it's possible that, that, that there were just some concept drawings, because some of those concept drawings that were done, the figures looked very different. I remember really liking Wetsuit. He had kind of like this spear gun that attached onto his arm, and that was missing from the figure because those early 2002 figures mostly just reused old accessories. Um, Anyway, I'm digressing again. This figure is probably not short fused because the other thing to note about this bag is that there's another name on here. So it pretty much proves that bags were being reused. And what is scratched out is that it says Shadow Viper. If you look, there's kind of a thing on there that has some numbers that were scratched out. And then it looks like something VC. I actually think that that's a J. I think it actually says JVC, which I'm going to assume means Joe versus Cobra. The abbreviation of that toy line in 2002 is always a little bit odd because it either gets to be JVC or GVC. 
depending on whether people are saying Joe versus Cobra or G.I. Joe versus Cobra. But I'm going to guess that this is JVC, and it's probably Duke rather than Short Fuse. These figures are pinned together. There's actually a metal pin in here, as well as a couple of styrene rods that, are, that were used to hold the shoulders on. This one does have swivel arm battle grip. I guess I forgot to mention that. So they have a wrist, an elbow, the old swivel arm battle grip. I'll probably always call it that, even though it's just as much of a swivel joint as anything in the wrist or anything. I don't call it like uh, some other kind of battle grip for the wrist. But that, that joint's always special to me. That's the swivel arm battle grip joint. And then they just have the standard shoulder joint. There's there's no additional motion. These are There are no rivets in here like we got with Joe versus Cobra. I can't say for sure whether or not they would have added those or no later on. Just that any kind of additional articulation on these particular sculpts does not exist as far as the stage that these are at. I'm going to guess that maybe they were, you know, putting them together as a proof of concept and probably took a look at them from there. Oh, Short Fuse slash Duke, he's actually a bit taller than Cobra Commander, which I don't know what that exactly means. It could mean that they were done by different sculptors, it could mean that they were done at a slightly different time. The material that these two are made out of is very, very similar to one another, so I have to think that they were done pretty much concurrently, but, but perhaps not. I really don't know why one is taller than the other. Uh, it could also be that they were just sculpted freehand and with no kind of standard buck or standardization. That's going to result in variances across the two figures, and these two ended up with different heights. Um, I would imagine something like that would have been corrected before these went to market if these two would have ever meant to went to market at all anyway because it's highly possible that these were done just kind of um, in-house so that they could talk about the feasibility of doing this as a toy line what it would have cost for all the tooling at this size what it would have cost for all the articulation how much articulation should they have how much shouldn't they have it's probably worth noting that 2002 was kind of, art articulation was a hot topic in 2002. I remember that we had gotten those figures that had the, what people called the Star Wars hip, hips at the time. And then that really didn't go over very well with the Joe community immediately upon seeing those prototypes. So Hasbro said, hey, right away we're going to get to work on making them O-rings. They kind of delayed things and bought themselves some time with some filler waves and then revised things so that figures like Zartan ended up coming out with O-rings from the outset. So Cobra Commander eventually got redone. Some other figures um, got a little bit of revision, like uh, Cobra Claws. But my point is, at this point in G.I. Joe history, they were looking at not using O-rings and not having that kind of motion in each of the joints. So it's possible that this was what we were going to get at the time. Um, again, I don't, I don't bring these up because I feel that we need to talk about whether or not you would buy these now. I, I think that it's more of a interesting discussion in how do you think they would have done back then? Where do you think G.I. Joe would be in 6-inch now if they had tried it back then? You know, do you think that... 6-inch G.I. Joe would have lasted a little while, or would it have been something that would have done one or two waves and then been done? Uh, would a G.I. Joe movie have gotten 6-inch? Would, would this have helped boost 6-inch in our minds now and in the market now? Or would it have meant that 6-inch uh, would have an even less likely chance of surviving now? I'm sure that we probably would be if it was one of the very few instances of 6-inch G.I. Joe that we had to use as reference, of course, we probably would have been referencing it right now. And even even now, with it not existing, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, but I find this to be interesting. I just kind of wanted to share. Uh, anytime 6-inch G.I. Joe comes up, I tend to think about these. I think that people often forget or, or are just unaware that there was going to be a a 6-inch G.I. Joe line, or at the very least, Hasbro was exploring that as far back as 2002. So let us know what you think uh, in the comments. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Do all those good YouTube things, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.
Thanks for watching this episode of Articulated Points. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'd appreciate it if you would like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to learn more about some of the toys featured in this episode or want to follow us on social media, links are in the description below this video.